31, we're back. I'm going to combine examples 9 and 10 on this page because I want us to graph a horizontal and then a vertical line together. And for each of these, I want the intercepts, the domain, and range. And I want to graph the horizontal and vertical line because they're the exception to the rule where we say domains and ranges for lines are all real numbers. So let's take a look at this one. I'm going to go ahead label and scale my axes. I'll go 10 and 10 again. All right, so this is basically, and I'm going to put a little separation here so I can talk about it. When we see f of x equaling 2, that's like asking you to graph the line y equals 2. So this is going to be a horizontal line. I want you to think about ordered pairs where the y coordinate is 2. And I, I think you can imagine like 0, 2. Right? That pair, ordered pair there is 0, 2. Okay, that has a y coordinate of 2. How about over here? How about this ordered pair? 10, 2. Right? The x coordinate is 10, but the y coordinate is still 2. Right? And we have that line, y equals 2. And you can start to feel out that any ordered pair on this horizontal line will have a y coordinate of 2 because it is shifted up 2 units from the origin. So when I go to graph this line, oops, I went a little off track there. Let me get my eraser. All right. So I've got that line graphed, y equaling 2. Oops, excuse me, I nudged this just a bit. All right, we've got y equaling 2, it's this horizontal line. And again, pick any point on this line. If I go here, this is negative 1, 2, right? negative 2, 2, negative 3, 2, negative 4, 2. You can hear every y coordinate is 2. You can even do fractions, right? negative 1 and a half, 2, negative 2 and a half, 2. The y coordinate is always 2. All right, so with that, let's talk about x-intercepts, y-intercepts, domains, and ranges, because they do get a little funky with horizontal and vertical lines. All right, x-intercept. When does this line, when does this horizontal line cross the x-axis? Well, it never does. So I don't have an x-intercept. And that's fine. It might seem odd right now. Most lines do have an x-intercept. Horizontal lines don't necessarily have one. And there are plenty of functions out there that don't have x-intercepts. Uh, when we get into later chapters, in chapter 5, we're going to graph parabolas. Imagine a parabola where its vertex was over here somewhere in the second quadrant and it never crossed the x-axis. So there are plenty of functions that don't have x-intercepts. Right, this particular function does have an x-intercept, excuse me, a y-intercept at 0, 2. All right, and it is a function. It passes the vertical line test. Okay. Now, the domain of this, let's look at the arrows. Right, this is right forever and this is left forever. So from here you can see the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Or you could take a look at this and say, well, what are my three domain issues, right? And let's, let's talk about them again because they're going to come up all the time in this class, right? So we have to look at fractions, radicals, and logs. Those are our three domain issues. Well, look at y equals 2. It's not a fraction. It's not a radical. It's not a logarithm. So my domain is all real numbers. Now, the range is different. I want you to think about every ordered pair, every ordered pair that's on this line. What are the different y values? Well, this would be the y value negative, what would be, this would be 11, 10. This would be negative 8, 2, right? This was 0, 2. This one would have been negative 3, 2. All right. What are the y values we hit? Well, we hit nothing, 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 and then we are overwhelmed with 2s and then nothing. So the only y value that ever pops up for any of these ordered pairs is the number 2. And because it's isolated like that, I'm using the squiggles as opposed to interval notation like I used for the domain. All right, so. Horizontal lines, no x-intercept. They have a y-intercept. Domains all real numbers. Range is one isolated number. Okay. So let me scooch this up, and we're going to try example 10. Let me get the graph into view. Oops. I can't quite get all of it, but that is 
pretty close, so we'll be happy with that. So here I'm going to graph x equaling 5. And take note, I didn't use function notation. There's a reason for that, and we'll talk about it. I've got to find intercepts, domain, and range. All right, so let me go ahead and label and scale my axes. Now I want you to think about an ordered pair that has 5 as its x-coordinate. Right, I can think of things like 5, 0, maybe 5, 1, 5, negative 2. Any of those ordered pairs have x equal 5 for their x-coordinate. So let me go graph a few of these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll do 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, negative 2. And I can see that vertical line forming there. So let me go ahead and draw that in. Okay. Now, drawing that in, I think you can see this, this thing would fail the vertical line test, right? Because if I pass this vertical line through it, it hits at every point, which is way more than at most one. So this is not a function. Vertical lines are not functions. Okay. But I think you'll also give me that any point on this graph or on this vertical line has an x coordinate of five. It has been moved five units to the right of the origin. Because again, x's always move you left, right? Y's always move you up, down. All right, so the x-intercept, you can see it right here, it crosses our x-axis at the ordered pair 5 comma 0. Where does this line, x equaling 5, cross the y-axis? Well, you can see it doesn't, right? I have no y-intercept. Okay, that's fine. There are graphs out there that don't have y-intercepts. This is an example of one. Okay, for domain and range, all right, if I look left to right, no x values, no x values, no x values, and then boom, right? I'm overwhelmed with all of these ordered pairs, but what is the only x value that each of these ordered pairs on this line has? We have a domain of just five. The only x value that you report on this line is five because it is quite literally the line x equaling five. Now the range is different. You can see this arrow is down forever, I think we can, oh, you can't see what I'm writing. Let me scooch that up. I forget it's out of view. So this arrow here, can we see it? Yeah, I'll write it here. Down forever. And here we're going up forever. So my range would actually be negative infinity to infinity. Because I do have y values that go from all the way down to all the way up, because I could have the ordered pair five, one million, Right, five, two million, I get it would be pretty high up, but I could have it. I could have five, negative 100 million. So I could have any y values, but my x value will always be limited to five. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the page and we're gonna do a quick slope recap before we get out of this, this idea of, of graphing lines. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey, Math 31, just a quick slope recap. So if you have a positive slope, your line is gonna rise as you move left to right, okay? Your line is increasing. If you have a negative slope, your line will fall as you move left to right, so your line would be decreasing. And we always talk about moving from left to right because on the x-axis, that's low to high. So as I move left to right in the x-axis, you can see my y's fall there, my y's get lower and lower, or here they get higher and higher, all right? And then the exceptions, these are most of your lines, positive slopes and negative slopes, where they have, yeah, increasing and decreasing. But the exceptions to that are the horizontal and vertical lines. So I do want to scooch this up and show you your other two options, Oops, just so we can see them. All right, so in terms of the other two options, you may have a horizontal line and you may have a vertical line. So horizontal, vertical. Right, we just did y equaling two and x equaling five. These are slightly different. This is the line y equals negative two, and this is the line x equals negative two. But they have slopes that are zero, and they have no x-intercepts, right? So horizontal lines, slope is zero, and it never touches the x-axis. And on the flip of that, if you have a vertical line, your slope is undefined, or you might say DNE for does not exist, and it has no y-intercepts because it never touches the y-axis. All right, and if you imagine you're a little skier, right? This one, you're just chugging, chugging along like a cross-country skier here. This is awful, your slope's zero. You're having some real trouble whilst you're skiing. If I scooch back up real quick just to finish this out, 
right? This skier, you're hiking up a hill. Here, you're, you're cruising down, right? Okay. So with that, we're gonna review up parallel and perpendicular lines, and then we will get out of this section. I'll see you in a bit, bye.